do it. From Los Angeles, California, we are the Mad Scientist Party Hour. Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Mad Scientist Party Hour. My name's Kevin Kraft. Joined, as always, by a man who has no pants or undies on and is currently jacking his boner off to pictures of Delta Burke. That's Jeff Clark. Who's, who's Delta Burke? You're going to have to explain that later. Ah, she's some hefty gal. <laughs> oh, not Brooke Burke. It's, not it's, her, Brooke fat, Burke. it's her fat homegirl. <laughs> and beaming to us from the inside of a mountain of pubes. The booger-eating furball known as Shuddy Boy. Yo. <laughs> Kevin, when Shuddy goes like this, doesn't that kind of give off, like, I want to speak to your manager digital vibes? No, uh, that's... Excuse me, go get your manager. No, when he does that, like, when he puts his, like, hands on top of each other, knuckles up, and rests his chin on him... Like this? That remind, that, that makes me think he's saying, I want to be your manager. Wink, wink. <laughs> uh it's your turn in dominoes i would like a free chalupa <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah yeah your way sounds much better than mine um so real quick i have to pay i have to pay tribute to my fallen little homie i hate i hate to be a bummer right off the bat but you know i gotta i gotta grieve with my friends over this and um, I assure you, there is fun farts, games, and poop to, to follow. But he was uh, essentially a member of the Puminati, a member of Poo Team 6. Uh, my little guy Gizmo um, passed away a couple days ago. He came that close to making it out of 2020. So fucking close. But uh, he was... I never talked about him really on the show because technically I'm... He was a sugar glider, and you're not supposed to have those things in California. I was just about to say, it's typical, you know, kind of stuff like artists getting famous after they die. We finally get to talk about Gizmo. I know. (laughs) Because he's gone. I still feel weird. I'm like outing Gizmo as a sugar glider. Yeah, Jeff's sweating sweating right now like he's being interrogated by the FBI. Because you've gotten in doing trouble this? so much for bringing Gizmo up on the show that Kevin's yeah. had to slice out. I've had to chop uh, references out because Jeff keeps going like, oh, ho, ho, well, you have a sugar glider. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> dude, motherfucker. So I used to be like jealous of that fucking thing because when we were hanging out in person, like would pet the sugar. And- he would pet Gizmo and not you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't great. But every time we had a guest come over, or come through. Like, you know, they would make a bigger deal about the sugar glider than me, for sure. Like, they were oh, like, yeah. he like was much a more stoked to, to he was a, the sugar glider. He was a big hit, especially with the ladies. Man, anytime we had, like, a porn star on the show, it we yeah. it would be, like, 20 minutes. It'd be like, all right, I know Gizmo's cute and all, but um, we have to start the podcast now, please. <laughs> so um, it was like, I had that in my mind, and that's why it was always, like, weird for me to not be able to bring it up, because I always thought that either like a porn star or a guest brought it up, but maybe they just did it off air. There were, and, and there were times where if somebody did bring it up, I would, I would chop it. Like a couple of times it got through. If you've listened to every episode, you've probably heard him referenced. Um, I did I'm my Dylan best knows. just cause like, uh, you know, uh, doing a show there's, you're never going to have a shortage of butt hurt pussies and people like to be, um, bitch ass narcs. And all it takes is you say one thing somebody doesn't like, and they're going to do everything in their power to try and get you in trouble. So I never wanted to have that ammo out there. And like, who knows if, if somebody wanted to be a big enough bitch or if it got to the wrong ears, they might come and fucking take them away and put them down or something. So I just never wanted to take that risk. And like Jeff said, Gizmo was like, he was always out with me. If you, if you listen to the show, you might've heard him in the background a couple of times. Cause sometimes he would have, if he was like dreaming, he would start going like, Hey, 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 and bark in his sleep. And that got picked up on Mike a couple of times. Yeah. At the, at the first spot, he was right next to the table, wasn't he? Yeah. And, and Razor were. 
Yeah, the the other one. She died. Wait, which she we died. can also now talk about. Yeah. Well, I think now I did. They... I did eulogize her a little bit when she died. Um, wow, it's almost four years ago now that she died. But uh, so since you know going into lockdown, he was just always out. You know, working from home. The second I woke up, I'd take him out of his cage, and like if he started getting antsy, I knew he was hungry. I used to keep a little a little uh, empty soda cap from like a, a Sprite bottle. And I would fill that up with water so I could tell when he was thirsty and I'd put that under him and he would drink. But I could tell when he was hungry and I'd put him back and, you know, let him let him get stuffed and then grab him again and take him back out. For all of the, um, you know, COVID shows, it feels weird doing the show right now without a pile of shirts right here and him in it. I mean, when I would, anytime I've been there and we've just been chilling in the apartment, he's been out. Always. The set, like, Always. I never even realized it until he was gone that, like, when I would come home from anywhere, like getting groceries from work, just going to Golden Apple to pick up comics, like pulling into my parking space, I would start getting giddy. Like I get to, I get to take Gizmo out in a couple of minutes. Um, so it's also a weird story of how I even ended up with such a fucking strange, random, obscure pet. My mom went to a craft fair one time in Jersey and she's walking around and she saw in the distance, some guy had these little furry things crawling all over him. And she thought, do you guys remember those things? They look almost like squirrel tails or like little ferrets, yes. but they're on strings. And people would like pull the invisible string and it would look like this thing was crawling on you. Yeah. So my mom thought that was what this guy had. And when she got closer, she thought she saw that they were like real live animals and was like, holy shit, what are these fucking things? And the guy gave her the sales pitch and she she fell for it. So this was when I was, you know, uh, living in Weehawken and working for the Stern Show. And every Tuesday night, I would produce the Riley Martin Show. So after working at the office, I would stop at this parking garage. I would pick up the Howard 100 news van that was full of equipment. And I would drive to New Jersey. And I would do Riley Martin Show, which was like a midnight show. And rather than driving all the way back to Manhattan, I would sleep at my mom's house in Jersey and then drive back in the morning. So when she got Razor the other sugar glider, the when you first get them, they are crackheads. They have endless energy. They are scared of everything. They want to bite you. They want to fight you. And it takes about eight weeks of a bonding process where you actually have to like put on, it, it helps you to put on gloves because they will constantly bite you. <laughs> and you basically just have to like get them over the hump. And then when they bond to you, they're like obsessed with you. But it's, it's a, it's a tough, annoying, long eight weeks, and that's also why people try to discourage people from getting them as pets, because a lot of people just give up. So every time I went to my mom's house for Riley Martin's show, I would stick my hand in there, and I would pet Razor, and my mom would be like, why the fuck isn't she attacking you? She attacks everybody in this house. And I was just like, oh, I don't know. She just likes me. So one day, um, after doing the Riley Martin show, my mom was like, why don't you just, do you want her? Just take her. You're clearly the only person she, person she likes. Um, and she just screams and yells at all of us. So, you know, I wasn't expecting to go home with a pet that day. And I go home. And this was when I was living with Chris Naboa, who hardcore Stern fans might know as Scott Farrell's old producer on Howard 101. So I come home with a fucking pet. And he's like, wait, what? What is this thing? And I take her out of the cage and I put her in the palm of my hand. I'm like, this is my sugar glider, Razor. <laughs> and he's like, what is this? And he gets real close and he's looking at her. And she puts her hands down and starts wiggling her ass and goes, Fra! and jumps right in his face. Lands oh. dead center on his face. And it wasn't like, they don't have like death claws. It, it didn't like dig into his flesh and shred him. She just landed on his face. And he was like, oh, oh, oh. And that story you know, made the rounds at the office and the Howard 100 News did a story on it and Howard Stern called me into the studio on air and made fun of me and basically said, you got this pet because it's a weird pet and nobody has it and you want people to talk about it. And I was like, <laughs> I can see how you arrived at that at that uh, um, conclusion, but I really just got him from my mom. But <laughs> yeah, did you push back? Hey, no, no, no. I'm just weird. <laughs> yeah. I don't want attention. I'm just no. I, I, I'm weird. I like the pet. So I put her cage in my bathroom, and in the middle of the night, she would wake me up doing that barking thing, going, "Hype, hype, hype," and I thought it was Pick basically 
because she was like lonely or something and they're nocturnal so like and i know that they you know in in the wild they live in big groups they're like a colonial animal so i reached out to the breeder and got a second one and that was gizmo um so you know the two of them made the trip cross country with me uh you know i had to sneak them into california and say that there was chinchillas in the cage <laughs> allegedly and you know they were they were my homies you know they kept me company living alone um when i was you know thousands of miles away from anybody that i knew and uh you know when razor died it was brutal but i still had gizmo and i had a girlfriend at the time so it was nice to have somebody to like commiserate with and pet gizmo and i took i built him like a little fort out of a shoebox because usually when you have a pair and one dies the other one will just let themselves go out of like loneliness and depression but i brought him to work with me for like two weeks and just worked with one hand while I just held on to him. Like, I don't know. I, I, I've gotten pretty good at doing things with one hand. So he, you know, he, he got through the, the depression, depression phase, I guess. And, you know, these past 10 months, you know, working from home, being here were bearable. Like I had family reaching out and they're like, man, I, just checking in on you. It's got to be so lonely being alone like this. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm not alone. I got I got Gizmo. He was like he was he was my partner in crime. So uh, the it was actually the day after we did the podcast. You know I was I was about to go to Jason Ellis's house for you know doing our Patreon show, and I wake up um, days that I have to go to um, Hermosa Beach. I, I usually wake up around like seven. So I wake up and he was in the middle of his cage, just on his side with his arms and legs out. You know, he always just sleeps in a ball. So I immediately knew something was up. You know, I took him out and I'm shaking him and calling his name. And he slowly came to, like, after a few minutes. But then he started, like, seizing up and his arms got all, like, stiff and weird. So I'm calling all these animal hospitals. And they're all just fucking jerking me off. It was it was infuriating. Like, the, the place that I had taken them in the past, they're like, yeah, we don't have any exotic doctors on hand right now. We can't help you. So they're giving me a number. I call that place. They, we can't help you. Give me a number. And I'm just calling, calling, calling. And I finally get to this place, and she's like, you know, it's probably like 7.30 at this point. And she's like, you know, we, um, we, our, our exotic doctors will be in at 9 a.m., but you need an appointment. And I'm like, did you not hear me? He's fucking dying in my hand. He's like crying out in pain and stuff. And I'm just like, this isn't an animal with a splinter or something. He's fucking dying. Like at least... Let me bring him in so you can put him down and put him out of his misery. And she, she was like, no, nope, can't help you. And I, I lost it. I was like, okay, if that's how this is going to be, I'm driving there anyway. And you can just watch him die with me in the lobby. Like I was, I was fucking furious. So I, I drive to the animal hospital and I could barely see because I'm bawling my eyes out. I'm like ugly crying like that dude in uh, um, Intervention. The guy who goes, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, all right? Oh, uh, you never saw that clip? No, no. They're like giving this guy an intervention, and they're like, listen to all the shitty things he's done, and, he's, and the guy's like, and even after all that, I still love you. And the guy just looks at him and goes, uh, I guess I thought that was a, a, a more gettable reference. All right, yeah. So, you know, I, I bring Gizmo in and they, they uh, with the pandemic and everything, they're not really letting people into the actual building. So they have like a makeshift waiting room set up in the parking garage. And, I, you know, I hand them off and they rush them in. And then they, a doctor comes out and they're like, look, he, uh, he doesn't have a heartbeat and his body's cold. So we can try to bring him back. And I was like, I guess, yeah, yeah, give, give it a shot at least. So a few minutes go by and my cell phone rings and it's them calling me and they're like, okay, well, we got him back and he has a heartbeat, but he's, he's not coming home with you. So if you want to come in and, you know, say goodbye, you're more than welcome to, you know, when we give him the injection and man, I wish these motherfuckers warned me because I went in there and they had him like part of his belly was shaved and they somehow got a catheter into his little body and they had his arms pinned back with like these metal clamps and he was like gasping for air. It was like 
these motherfuckers let me walk into like a Hellraiser movie. I when when Lily died, the ferret, I sat up with her going through that until like four in the morning until she finally It's nightmarish. It was it was hell. Like even thinking about it is is getting me all bummed out because Ruby, the other ferret, has gotten tumors on her neck. So she's, you know, and Sharon and I were both like, we're not going through that again. As soon as it seems like she's not able to eat or drink water anymore, we're just, we're going to do the humane thing because it was yeah, for sure. fucking gut-wrenching. Like, it's it's awful. It's yeah. really a bummer to talk about. Uh, but it, yeah, I, I can't even imagine. Like, I saw the, the messages in Discord of people saying they were sorry. I'm like, what the fuck happened? And then I checked Instagram and my heart just broke for you when I saw the post. Like, I know, I know how close to both of them you were, but especially Gizmo after Razor. Yeah. And I had him for 11 years. So the There's last four years, he was just your, you know, he was the only one you were giving your attention to. So you and him bonded even more. So I am very sorry, dude. Thanks, man. Yeah, they they yeah, found Mark a and... they found a, a tumor in his stomach when they put the catheter in. So he didn't he didn't have much time anyway. And like his he had been losing weight and stuff. And eleven years is is old for a sugar glider. You know they they tend to they're they're considered geriatric at like six or seven. And that's um, right where Ruby is. She's at six. I th- or five yeah so she they're she's you know they're not small animals like that i don't think are intended to live that long because yeah. in the wild they generally will get eaten by something bigger yes uh, yeah so yeah i've seen the, the stats like i think in 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 the wild sugar gliders live to be like two or three on average <laughs> just because they're you know they're little they're little walking chicken nuggets they get picked off by by birds and I think they're native to like Australia and New Zealand and yeah, they're, they're, they're a fucking snack. So, you know, I've I've been trying to just console myself by saying, you know, yeah, if he was in the wild, there's no fucking way he's living to 11 and getting pampered and getting pet all the time and stuff. And, uh, I mean, even for a human, he got to live a pretty cool life. Like he was born in Florida, lived in Jersey, cross country trip to California. Um, he got, he got babysat by uh, Seek, Dustin Ibarra, and um, Grant Imahara from uh, Mythbusters, of all people, who yeah. R.I.P. also passed this year. Um, mad mad porn stars have touched and pet him. <laughs> haven't touched me at all. I'll tell yeah. you that. He, he's gotten as much pussy as I have over the past year or so. More porn stars have touched Gizmo than touched Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Way, like, way higher. So Where? he lived, he lived a very long cool life. He he almost got eaten by Mayhem Miller's dog. I don't know how many people will remember this story, but I one time at my first apartment was just sitting at home and when, you know, Razor and Gizmo were younger, I used to just let them run around the apartment cuz they're when they're young, they have the energy of fucking crackheads. They are just constantly running around. So I my intercom buzzes and it's Mayhem and he's like, yo, I'm coming up. Ha 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 I was like, oh boy, here we go. So I buzz him in. I hear him in the hallway. I open up the door and immediately a dog runs in like 70 miles an hour and gets gizmo in his mouth like in a split second. And a split second later, I was on top of him prying his jaws open and, you know, got him out uninjured. But he also came very close to being a snack for Mayhem's dog. <laughs> Yikes! Uh, that what a been, colorful that life. Would have, that would have been the most mayhem thing in the world for his dog to eat. Oh, I know. <laughs> Your sugar glider, like that is just so mayhem, Miller. He even came to like he made a trip to Mammoth with me. He's been to Vegas. He's been to Ellis Manias. Not the actual event, but like days where I couldn't get anybody like Ellis Manias when I couldn't get somebody to watch him. I packed a big suitcase and I had like a little travel cage for him. And I would just put that in the suitcase and then take it out when I got upstairs to the room. 
Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say he didn't fight like in any events, right? <laughs> yeah, he fought um Dr. Drew's hamster. Special <laughs> guest referee Gizmo. Yeah, he was in the electric shock collar fight. So do you have any intention of getting a pet again? At this moment, no. Um that was really rough to go through, and it's still very, very hard. I am I'm grateful. I get to, uh, you know, go and do the Ella show. That takes my mind off of things. Doing this takes my mind off of things. Um, oh, you know, over the weekend, we recorded some new supermarket queefs for Patreon. That helped a lot. <laughs> uh, just staying busy, but, like, while it does feel super empty and another pet would be nice right now, I just... I'm going to wait until my brain calms down a little bit to uh, make a des- decision on that. Dude, it you're a better man out. than I am because while when R- Ruby is gone, we will not be getting another small. I we will I I this is the second time I've dipped my toes into the small animal realm of pets, and it's the final time for for sure this time. But if one of the dogs has you know when one of the it's the time for one of the dogs my first instinct will immediately be to go find another dog to, ref- to, to fill that void. I could see instead that. Of yeah. coping, instead of coping <laughs> like a proper adult, just focus that, that attention elsewhere. That's yeah. what you should do. Mask it, drink booze, get another fucking thing to love. That's the, that's, that's the play. It, it freaks me out knowing how upset I'll be when Allie goes down. Like I, I will, I don't know if I just thinking about it, there's no way I'll be able to podcast that week. No like way. My, all the, the pets that we had growing up, my parents handled, you know, taking them when they needed to be put down. So yeah. I, I never experienced it. The closest I've gotten was, um, there was a, a brief period when after Christmas dinner, we would go to the movies um, and that tradition ended the year my mother made us all go see Marley and me. Oh my God. On Christmas day. <laughs> oh. And every single one of us was bawling, including my father, who I had never seen cry at a movie was ugly crying because he had Meh. gone through that with our first dog who was out of control like Marley and he was like that was exactly as terrible as when I went through it with Dusty so I I have no I, I'm dreading the day I'm like, they need Sharon, to find like everybody that was involved in making Marley and me and just karate chop them all in the throat like you sons of bitches you know what you were doing you you just wanted to get everybody hooked on this beautiful little. I didn't even see the movie, and I never will. But like, <laughs> me neither. You got everybody. Sounds into like a this. star is born for a dog. Yeah, like you make you make everybody in the audience fall in love with this dog, and then you kill him. Like, hey, come give us money. We'll give you the uh, emotions of losing a, a lovely pet. Like, fuck you, fuck you, yeah. you death dealers, you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I had no idea it was coming, and then. They, yeah, it was, it was awful. So I, I dread make having to make that decision. And I'm sure there are people out there that are like goofing on me right now. Like, Oh, whatever. It's like a little fucking hamster. I'll let you spend 11 years with one of those little guys. They for sure have personalities. They're very loving. Um, and it's going to be, it's going to be a rough road back to normal without, without my little buddy. Uh, so RIP gizmo. And I do want to give a shout out to our friend, Bonnie. Because Bonnie's been very helpful with this whole thing. She lost her doggy, uh, not like uh, in the you know past couple of years, and I know it wasn't easy for her. She was kind of in the same situation as me, like moved from the other side of the country um, without knowing too much and having too much of a of a plan here. Just wanted to be on the west coast, and Sebastian was her little buddy, so she's been you know reaching out, checking in on me, helping me through it. So shout out to you as well, Bonnie. Much appreciated. Dude, um, if I had walked in 
to that vet office and Allie was hooked up to the same medical contraption that Gizmo was, everyone in that room would have been in, in trouble. Every, I would have absolutely lost my shit. I'm like, telling this you is that what you brought me into. Yeah, all right. If none of you can walk out of here knowing that you've seen me cry, so <laughs> we're gonna have to handle this the, the hard way, I guess, guys. Fucking roll up my sleeves. Yeah, that was that. That was like vets. the uh, that image will be burned into my head till the day I go. But like I, I, I went in because you know when they they presented me with that option when when Razor was on her way out and I was like I, I can't fucking do it I can't I know I can't do it and I felt guilty so I was like you know when when I they gave me the option for Gizmo I was like I'll I'll be there with them and yeah I was that was the wrong move I fucked up uh, well, <laughs> but, I'm ready um, to cry just thinking about it yeah, I apologize bummer, and like, like I said to go through that like I said. I just had to get off that off my chest. You know, MSPH is a is a place where we talk about our lives as well as make jokes. And as I promised, jokes and poops and farts to follow. So, um, by the way, I've had endless diarrhea recently. Have you really? <laughs> yeah, but that was that was my way of transitioning out. Maybe. I was gonna. I had like a pivot that I had, but it's still somewhat like the animal kingdom, I guess. Give it a shot. Can we give it a shot? I think you might you might be interested in this conversation. It was a it was a blunt conversation I had. Like, excuse me, like a conversation blunt? I had over a blunt with my mother. So <laughs> my so my grand yes. so my so my grandmother on my father's side has been like divorced or separated for from my grandfather for I mean most of my life. I mean he's he's dead now. Um, and he's been dead for, I don't know, like 10 years, give or take. Um, but she was like awesome with dogs. Awesome. With, she, uh, I told you, I grew up like, you know, appreciating dogs and, and horses. She had horses and dogs, uh, on her like little farm or on her farm that she took care of great German shepherd trainer. Um, and that was like, you know, she didn't, she didn't date at all or see anyone or get romantic with anyone after she had been with my grandfather, but in her house, she had like a whole bunch of portraits of like dogs of her old dogs and old horses. And I don't think that's like specific to my grandmother. I think some people do that. Some like grandparents or just whatever, just people do that. Right. So I was thinking again, I was high uh, talking shit with my mom, but I was thinking like, <laughs> Maybe our family should just like, just like stake a claim to an animal and like get a bunch of, since I have bare walls, maybe we should just get a bunch of portraits of an animal and we'll just say that that's like the family animal. And it's almost like part of like the crest, like the Lannisters have the lions or the Starks have the wolves. The Clarks will have like the rhinos or the hippopotamuses. And Did your mom tell like, you to shut up? Oh no, we were high. We were just, we were, it was hysterical. <laughs> Everyone was laughing. This is a pretty good idea. So, because again, my walls are, are bare and people have made well, let me, comments about it on uh, uh, watching, watching the MSPH YouTube. Let me team, ask you uh, this, YouTube Jeff. YouTube feeds. Is okay. this a dog? Like, or were you suggesting Allie for this or just picking a random dog off of Getty images? No, I'm, I know I'm saying look, we should pick a random fucking animal. And just have like portraits, portraits, or like, or or hang things up of a random animal. I don't want it. Are to you be following this, Shuddy? I have no I mean, idea what's going on. <laughs> I'm saying my grandmother had portraits of her horses and her aunt, but they were uh, animals she dogs. owned, right? Yes. So but I think it would be funny to <laughs> fill my bland blank walls with portraits of just a one, just an animal. And I'm just going to say, Hey, it's a family animal. We, we fuck with rhinos. We're a rhino family. <sighs> no, I have a better idea now that I'm, I, I'm not usually now, go ahead. Now that I can, now that I wasn't responding to something work related, you have my full attention. So there are websites out there that will take a picture of your dog, Allie and put her head on funny bodies like um Not so you could have a oh. literal portrait of ally like if you have a picture of gizmo kevin you could get his 
head put on like William Sha- uh, William Shakespeare type. Too I've, soon, I've seen that. Too soon. I've I, I've seen those. I think it would be funnier if Jeff did like the um the Burt Reynolds bearskin rug pose, just got butt naked and laid on his side like this, and then they put Allie's head on his naked body, and then you can have yeah. your family put that picture up everywhere. That would have to be a short shoot because she's farted in my face in similar positions like three no. or four times. Allie doesn't have to be there. You take the picture and then they later Photoshop Allie's head on where your head would be. Oh, oh I see. So I, I you see have okay. Allie's yeah. like roller coaster yeah. face on right. your nude sideways body. Oh, gotcha. come and get it, fellas. I guess you guys had to be there for the conversation. This sounded better in my head than it went over here in this little little MSPH powwow, but I don't know. <laughs> we don't have we have bland walls. My mom was making fun of me the other day about it. Like, you gotta get something to like spruce this place up. I don't know, a female touch or just hang things on your wall. And you know, again I was high and I was talking shit about my grandmother, about her having portraits of dogs, and I just thought I'd go with the weirdest possible angle on that uh, you I'll did send you a you pop succeeded. culture painting like that thundercats one i have right there <laughs> for your wall dude so i bought a fucking uh a michael jordan poster where he's hitting the final shot against the utah jazz in that game six finals and he's the only person in color and everything else is black and white oh you could put ali's head and- on him <laughs> i'm the jump man point is like it doesn't like fit a frame and it's like a weird like texture so i gotta like unfold mean, this it f- doesn't fit a frame how big is it you can get it custom framed it's been a while that's well, what i do with all the comic book pages that i buy all the like frame spots around here i think have been closed i don't i've One had by it for a open. while now i've gotten stuff framed since the pandemic what do you what, what, like errands where do you go What's the name of the the the, the framing place? It's not Aaron's a chain. Place it's, it's, I've been a, it's a mom and pop shop, like that I can walk to from here. Spots are open. That's yeah, I'm basically what I'm like saying. That. Spots are open. Um, <clears throat> oh, oh, hold on, hold on, because there's an email I think that leads into this. I'm sorry. Bear with me one second. We're gonna lose shuddies and then go off and do work. I hope you're happy. No, we're not. This is something that you will be interested in, Jeff. Why'd the email go away? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Um, this is from Dave in Canada, and he says, Jeff, I got, I have your back 100% on the Armageddon fact about Rockhound on one shuttle and Oscar on the other. It's been some time since I've watched Armageddon, but you are right. And Armageddon is in the top five of my all favorite movies. Cheers. So Dave in Canada has got your back. Okay. Yes, Jeff is right. I do have something to say. I believe I know what you have to say because I got a text about it today. Oh, okay. I was going to say I got a text message from friend of the show, Mark Rinker, and he asked me if I liked Armageddon. And I said, I haven't seen it in a while, but yes, I really like Armageddon. And he said, I loaned the DVD to Dom because he hasn't seen it. I wonder what he's going to think. And my exact response was, he's going to hate it. So I wonder if uh, you have an update on that situation. I do. All right. Yes. Dom Dom texted me this morning saying that he watched Armageddon. Jeff, I, I know you have the most riding on this. Do you have any predictions? I think he'll like it. I think I'll like it. I think he'll be north of, I don't know, I thought I saw a little smirk that gave away like a little tell there, Kevin. I think he'll be north of three and a half Armageddon dicks. Maybe I just have too much hope for for Dom. I think it's funny, the whole shitty movie thing, but he has some, he has some good takes. Yeah. Dom, I fuck with 311. I do. I like 311. That's fine. I fuck with 311 as well. You're going to knife me in the back over Armageddon, though. I could hate 311 just like that or... Yeah, so that's what I'll say. Before I thought, I thought we could do like a "What the fuck did I just watch?" and make like more of an event out of this because I was so 
I was so like interested in going back and forth. Like if his score isn't five out of five, I'm going to try to argue for whatever he's missing to make up for it. I'm going to try to flip the script on him or, or try to sell him on the parts that maybe he thought Armageddon sucked during. So I guess without any further ado, what, what, what did this possible pussy Dom have to say? So I'll read you his text verbatim. I finally okay. watched Armageddon. While I enjoyed it, it's definitely not a five dicker. Four stars for me. Haha. Ha. Feel free to relay that uh, message to Jeff tonight. It was good, and I think I should have seen it in the theaters when it came out uh, to fully enjoy it. But four dicks, that's above your line. Yeah. I mean, like, if he went three and a half, I would have taken it as an insult and probably <laughs> adjusted his Discord situation. But <laughs> it's fine. I mean,. You know, I, a four the four is a, respect, a respectable score. That's that's a peer review number or score that will that will get me to spend money or put effort into into a, a movie typically. So I appreciate that. I wish that me me maybe me and him maybe I'll hit him up on Discord could have a back and forth about what it's missing for that one extra dick. But fine, four whatever. Uh, I have something uh, that I watched that I can review. This is something okay. I actually watched uh, last week, but I try to. I want to make each episode well rounded, so I didn't want to try and cram in too many reviews. But I watched. I don't know if this made it on your guys's radar. The last blockbuster documentary. Nope. I didn't nope. know that it was out. It's it out. It's now on my radar. I rented it on Prime, and um, it was it was solid. Like I think I've I've mentioned on the podcast before that I always loved video stores. I wasn't necessarily like um, a blockbuster devotee or anything. I honestly like the mom and pop shops a little bit more, and then I liked Hollywood Video. But I mean, I, I had no hatred for for blockbuster at all. I got a video store on the corner of my block in Long Beach. See, if there was one here in Studio City that I could like walk to, I would 100% get a membership. Like without even thinking twice. Cuz like sometimes you're just in the mood to watch a movie and, you know, the streaming services, while there's a lot of them, there's massive gaps and shit that they just don't have. Uh, but it was it was really cool because it didn't only just focus on this one remaining blockbuster that's in Bend, Oregon. It kind of gave the whole history of uh, you know how video stores came to be, how the chains took over, and then how they just shit their pants and died. And I, this was because you know I, I've loved movies you know my whole life, and I remember you know when you, like. When you're young, you watch movie a movie, you find a movie you like, and you watch it 5,000 times. And when you would rent a movie you really liked as a little kid, and then you had to take it back a couple days later, you get bummed out. And I remember seeing the price tag on them. They were like 100 bucks. And even as a kid who had no idea the value of a dollar, I still remember being like, $100? What the fuck? And they talked about that like in the, in the, in the documentary, how... Um, studios initially tried to sue rental stores when they opened. Because they were like, well, hey, if we just buy this for 100 bucks and then we can just rent it to people, we can make our money back. And it all went all the way to the Supreme Court. And that's how, you know, video rental stores came to be a legally existing thing. So there was... Did they cover this in the doc? Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of interesting stuff they touched on. And then they... You know that uh, like Doug Benson's in it. There's a lot of comics in it, and at the end of it, they actually document Doug Benson's trip to Oregon to you know walk into it. And it's funny because they do that with other people too. They just it got really popular, so they set up cameras and they just filmed people's reactions as they walked in for the first time, being like, "Oh wow, it even smells like a blockbuster," and people just ooing and eyeing. And it gave me another thing to put on my my billionaire list if I ever become a billionaire. I every rich person that doesn't sh fucking shame on you. So many rich people have theaters in their house. If you have a theater in your basement, you're a billionaire, multimillionaire, whatever. 
right next door should be a mock block blockbuster. Like every movie should be on display with a case behind it that has the disc. And anytime it's movie night, you walk up in the up the aisles of your own blockbuster and you select a disc and then you grab some snacks and a little tub of popcorn and then you walk back over to your theater. How the fuck doesn't every billionaire have that? Shame! Are you billionaires? I got you. So you're you're saying they're being cheap with their own personal home theater? I'm saying billions are wasted on the billionaires. Like I would Yeah. You if if anybody had shit that cool, you would hear about it. Like I'm sure Jeff Bezos's estate has, you know, cool state of the art tech and fancy art and it looks really nice, but he doesn't have fun cool shit. Yeah, like if if Man, I hear LeBron James has some has a pretty sweet sweet house. I don't know if you like basketball. I mean, you don't like basketball, but if you do, like he certainly has a home gym and a home basketball court. Yeah, I mean, you at see, least one pool. Everybody, everybody on yeah. Cribs has that. But like, okay, if you have a cool pool that looks like it's a, a lagoon, like there's built up rocks and waterfalls and cool alcoves a and a grotto. Exactly. Okay, I'll give you points for that. You're doing it right. If you just have like a, an infinity pool, it's like, ooh, basic bitch, rich ass, hacky. Ooh. All right. Yeah. <laughs> New ooh. money, if you will. <laughs> New money. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. But like this guy has no class. I've said it before. If I was a billionaire, trampoline room. One hundred percent my mansion has a trampoline room. Uh I'm gonna have like an old school arcade. Uh the a blockbuster's going in. Sounds like what you really are looking for is to be a son of, of a billionaire. I'll take it. <laughs> Dad, if you're listening, become a billionaire, please. I d I don't know <laughs> if this kind of mind lends itself well to being a billionaire three commas three comma guy wasn't talking like this i know i mean but even uh, i'm i'm exaggerating a little bit even if you're like uh i don't know if you have 25 million in the bank you could probably it's i don't think it would be all that expensive to get a couple of blockbuster signs like i feel like rich people all have a massive basement anyway just do it up like a blockbuster those shelves are dirt cheap those wire shelves come on what are we doing Rob Sprance is a home theater. The god, the uh, the former Godfather. Yeah, if Rob Sprance pops up one more tier, he's he can put a blockbuster next to, next to it. One more tax bracket. Yeah, you know it's what? Called the cool. I should I should market myself as a um a rich person cool guide. But like, you have all this fucking money, you don't know how to live with it. I'm gonna show you how to really live, and I'll be like. You want to you want to make all your friends jealous? You want some sh- some shit to brag about on social media? I'll fucking show you what's up. Like a rich person's tastemaker. Mm-hmm. There is a there could be a field or 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 a space for that. Wasn't there? Uh, someone was telling me. I can't. I don't even know who the, the guy's name is. But there was an epic like autobiography that a homie read about this record studio salesman who would try to like get bands to like join their record label and he just knew how to like party his ass off like dudes love this fucking guy and he would just like go on tour with a band or go to like a part take a a band to a party and like sign them right could just hang with alcohol drugs was just a fucking icon right that's kind of what you're talking about just when it comes to having fun with a surplus of cash. Yeah. I actually knew a guy whose job it was, their entire job, to schmooze with the pluses of the A pluses. Like in in the 90s, whoever was like the biggest swing and dick, the biggest G, the most, the highest tier of megastar, when they were in town, they would hook him up with this guy and he would be like, come on, we're having fun. And he made Is it LA dude or Vegas dude? Because uh, they have a lot of that in Vegas where it's just like a host. And this guy, this guy finds some cool shit. You know what I mean? I won't say just because I don't I don't know if this guy's comfortable with his identity get, getting out, so I don't want to give too many clues, but um high profile kind of a high profile guy who was with like legends. Just legends. Anytime they came to town, he took them out and like his whole job was just to make sure these people have the night of their lives. And I feel yeah. like, Shuddy, 
what what would the job title be if my dream came true? If rich people just came to me and I showed them how to do the coolest, most fun things with their money? Like, you're a fucking dork. You don't know how to really get the most out of your billions. Sure, I, I can't tell, tell you how to invest it and turn it into more money, but I can make sure you have the, the coolest shit, the coolest toys, and the most fun house out of anybody. Jeff looks like he has an idea. Jeff One more chance. One more chance. Luxury tastemaker. You could you could put that in a business card. I do like it. I do like it. Shuddy, how does okay. that sound to you? Do you have an alternate suggestion? Is that a panther on your forearm? It is. Cool. <laughs> I've had this tattoo for as long as you've known me. <laughs> Man, I, I usually only see you from here up, and you don't have your... Well, you have seen me in per. We have met in person, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyways. <laughs> Man, does this look worse um, now that I turned trying that off? Trying to help Kevin out with his future employment. Office. I know. I wish I would have had time to. I mean, I do like luxury tastemaker. I don't like the tastemaker part. I do kind of sound like I'm a coffee machine. Yeah, but it's not like. What you're saying could be twisted to be so fucking cheesy and so, like, I don't know. Yeah, you don't want it to be something like director of fun. I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, the fun police. I'm chief of the fun police. Here I am. Like, no fucking cool guy with millions is going to, or billions, and <laughs> be like, yeah, let's hang out with the fucking chief of fun police. It's got to be something that, ah, uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Luxury planner? Makes yeah, me sound like I'm a wedding planner. Yeah, event planner, party planner. People do these kind of things. Dick swinger? No, that sounds like a gay porn star. Um, yeah, I mean, that could be, yeah, you could get some weird phone calls if you have the <laughs> title Dick Swinger. Like, no, no, you're thinking of someone else. No, I'm just, I just, I just teach you how to spend your money the cool way. Uh, really? you don't, you don't teach me how to lay the fucking wood. No. Billionaire entertainment officer. So then you're a CEO. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I think that's going to confuse people too. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to put a <laughs> pin on it. But um, I mean, last blockbuster. That that's an enjoyable documentary. I know it was a, a long roundabout way to get there, but I, I'll oh, suck. God. I'll suck four blockbuster dicks. I. Man, I'm telling you, my dream job was to work in a video store. I fucking, when I dropped out of college, uh, I was. I, no, I, that would be I, a terrible turn of events. Oh, I know. Well, it got worse because <laughs> like I dropped out and I moved back in with my mom and my stepdad and I was pretty much maintained the same, the same level of laziness. I was lazy as, as fucking college. I barely went to any of my classes. I didn't do my homework. I was very good at drinking beer and partying and doing drugs. Um, but when I when I dropped out and moved back home, I was a fucking unemployed, non-going-to-school loser. And I just sat around and smoked weed and played video games all day. And I was talking with this chick that I went to Bing Bong school with, and I always thought she was super cute. And she was talking about coming to visit me. And I got the sign-off. My mom was like, yeah, she can, um, yeah, she can come stay here for like uh, you know half a week or something. So I was like all excited and I thought I was going to get some booty and we were um, sending each other some uh, coded flirty messages that led me to believe that booty might be in the cards. So I was very excited and my mom got pissed off at me. She's like, you've been out of college for so long. You need a fucking job or else she can't come over. And I was like, all right, all right, I'll get a fucking job because nothing motivates a 19 year old like booty. So I told her this. And then went out and I started applying for jobs. And I applied to every blockbuster, every Hollywood video, every mom and pop place. And they all shut me down. And my mom kept telling me, she's like, you don't get a fucking job. She's not coming. So that was when I made the decision. I was like, I need, I need a sure thing. And I applied at fucking McDonald's and, of course, got hired right away. And then when I called her up and I'm like, hey, good news. I got a job today. She was like, oh, I didn't think that you were going to get one. So I made other plans and I'm not going to be able to come. So um, 
I still don't think I've even seen her since graduating, but that's how I ended up working at McDonald's. And it was in the same fucking shopping plaza as a Hollywood video. It was in Byram, New Jersey. And I worked in the Byram Shopping Center at this McDonald's. And I would look out the window over at the Hollywood video and I'd be like, man, those motherfuckers must be so happy. Well, cancel whatever plans you just made because you were talking to the new Fry Guy. And where were you? What McDonald's again? In Byram. In Byram. Yeah. Interested? I sm- WAP? You bringing I, that WAP over? I, I constantly smell like stale French fries. <laughs> I can give you seven, not six chicken nuggets. <laughs> seven. Pay for six, I'll give you seven. <laughs> but yeah, never never wow. got to never got to realize my dream. Never got to work in a video store. And they're mostly gone now. Leisure and entertainment guru. Oh, I do like guru because it sounds like I have guru is good. Sounds like I have four arms. Guru is good. Yeah. Well, that's Goro. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know you were talking. I just kind of <laughs> let it roll. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Thought it was like my rhino thing for a split second. Oh, grief has broken Kevin's brain. We're just going to let it slide until he recovers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He'll start making sense eventually. Just let him fucking let him keep talking. Let him process. Just let him process. Entertainment guru. That's not bad. Um, sh- do you guys uh, have anything to toss reviews at for? Uh, I've watched the first three episodes of Cobra Kai. Yeah, everybody's. Uh, love that. Yeah, everybody is very, very excited about Cobra Kai. I was never the, like the hugest Karate Kid fan. It did get me to do Taekwondo for five years in the eighties. But that was just because I wanted to be a ninja. <laughs> I think I've seen phase. I think I've seen Karate Kid like maybe three times in my entire life. But ha- what about you, Shuddy? Were you a huge Karate Kid fan growing up? Very big Karate Kid fan growing up. Um and I loved the first two seasons of Cobra Kai. Three seems to be a little bit cheesier than the last couple. Uh but I'm still having a lot of fun with it. It's still very good. Um, yeah, but I'm not, I'm only three episodes in. I, I've been pacing myself. We've been watching, we started Game of Thrones at the beginning. How can you do that to yourself? Yeah, you know where it's going. Sharon has never seen it, so. you That's terrible. That's even worse. You're going to put uh, her through that? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, when you get to the final season, just be like, uh, there's something wrong with the uh, HBO now. I, I can't fix so, it. It's crazy what? how much stuff that ended up not being plotted out that gets tied up at the end is talked about in the first season. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they planted seeds very early on, which was impressive. It's just a shame they, they grew into poop trees at the end. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, has they she did not harvest those seeds very well or I, cultivate, whatever. I feel like even if you didn't watch Game of Thrones, like when the finale aired and for months afterwards, people were so pissed. It was just everywhere, unavoidable, memes to the to the death. D- it was I, like Doug Peterson. <laughs> I don't get it, he, but um, the Eagle the, Sunday Night Football. Oh, okay. So has she? Does she know how it ends? I don't think so. Are yeah. you going to tell her? <laughs> does she know that it You're ends? That it ends with a plop. Sort of. She she actually looked at me the other day and she goes, "She's terrible. She can't live very long, does she?" And I was like, "She was." I was like, "She talking about Cersei." She sure was. I was like, nope. She, not to spoil anything, but she's right up till the very end. <laughs> like, we're stuck with her. Uh, so you can't do that, man. There's so many like random deaths that you gotta, you can't spoil it because, because really at the end of the day, in my opinion, that that is kind of what makes Game of Thrones or what did make Game of Thrones great is oh, that yeah. they were willing to off anyone you would i mean you would think or that was like the and they vibe had, they gave off and they had great villains that just did the right. most like scumbaggery things ever and you're just like oh god i hope you get it and you get it really fucking bad and then they would just live for so long and you're just every week tuning in like fucking die this time die and if you know 
if you get that satisfaction, like if they kill all the dickheads right away, then you're just watching some happy go jolly show where, you know, a midget fucks a bunch of hot prostitutes and stuff. Like you really need somebody to hate to drive you through that show. I think that's like a huge percentage of what made it so good. But wow. Yeah. To sit through all that again, you're you're a tough guy, Shuddy. Thanks. I'm For enjoying real. it though. I am enjoying it. I texted my ex who I'd gotten into Game of Thrones after this the series finale and just apologized. It's like my bad. What a fucking whiff, huh? Not sorry for anything else, but I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. I'm sorry, I got you. <laughs> Game of Thrones. I will not. I will not ask for forgiveness for anything else other than the Game of Thrones. That's fun. I could I could just see her opening the text and seeing it like starting with "I'm sorry," and she's like, "Oh, Jeff has really grown as a person. He's apologizing for the the things he did in the relationship." And it's like, oh, he's apologizing. Yep, I made the right choice. All right, cool. Thanks, Jeff. Bye. I, I'm sure. I'm sure it didn't start with Jeff. It probably just said seven one eight, and then oh, who, who new phone? Who this? <laughs> you know who got you into Game of Thrones? Don't play me out. <laughs> Save my number, girl. I'm coming back. So I did. I, I mentioned this uh, after I cut the cord on cable, and was like, all right, you know, cable's so fucking expensive. That's a lot of money I'm saving every month. I can I can devote a little bit of it to sign up for, for Peacock. I yeah. mentioned I signed up for Still Peacock. Bring that up, actually. So one of the things that went away with 2020 was The Office being on Netflix, which, I mean, I can't even count how long it was there. I mean, Parks and Rec and The Office were like my, my comfort shows that I would put on when I was falling asleep at night. And Parks and Rec went first. And then um, New Year's Eve, it lost The Office as well. So we on New Year's Eve night we were watching The Office and we want would we want to see what happened when it became midnight. We were hoping that maybe we could just be like grandfathered in to being able to loop The Office forever, and we yeah. just were never going to turn it off. But then now, like uh, immediately after the final episode that we watched finished, which I think was like twelve oh five all the other episodes were like stoned out and you couldn't, you couldn't click into them. So yeah, I was actually going to bring up to you what it's like being <laughs> one of the few people that can still watch the office. Yeah, I know. Cause I don't think a lot of people signed up for Peacock, but no, cause no, that happened like to me people when they took um, parks and rec off the air. Cause I was, I was watching an episode in bed and the episode ended and then it just brought me back to the home screen. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And I'm scrolling through and I was like, Oh, that's right. Went away at midnight. Um, so a cool thing that they, they did on Peacock was, you know, the, the whole series is there, but they have what they call the super fan episodes. And at this point, it's only season three. And I think I saw a note that said um, in March there's more coming. But they re-edited all of season three with deleted scenes put back in. So... Well, you know, I, I listen to that Office Recap podcast still <laughs> that everybody goofs on before. <laughs> but like, they talk about it. So when they review every week, they you know they go back through an old episode and review it. And uh, the the woman that plays Angela, she watches all the deleted scenes with it too, because I think she's watching on discs. So when you're shooting TV shows for network TV, it's usually like 21 or 22 minutes. They always overshoot, and then they have to like really really chop it down to get it to fit down to the second whatever their time code is for that week so they have they've had to axe entire storylines um they've cut like really good scenes sometimes stuff just doesn't fit and it's like this is one of the funniest scenes of the episode but we have to axe it so there's time for all this other stuff to make sense and they like uh i've seen every episode of The Office so many times I can't even count it. So I started with, you know, the first episode of season three, which is the the gay witch hunt one. And uh, <laughs> there's, like, after the cold open and they do the, the theme song, that first scene afterwards, like, they recut it and put the opening credits over it because it's a new, like, first scene. So they really went, like, above and beyond of getting new shit in there. And... I think each episode has like four to six minutes added. And in a TV show, that's a lot. Like TV show sitcoms, like their scenes are quick. 
everything moves super, super quick because it's got to be tight. There's got to be jokes every so many seconds and stuff. So four minutes, four to six minutes added every episode is a ton. It's a lot of That's scenes. That's like 25 to 30%. Yeah. And they're yeah. great. Just the ones that I've seen so far, fucking awesome. So, you know, I've been happy with uh, cutting the cord and giving that money to Peacock, but I've seen a lot of but people saying online. For the most part, online, you're just paying for, for Parks and Rec in office, right? That's what I thought at first, but after fucking with it, you know, they, they have movies streaming on there too, and they have their live channels, which might be available on the free version because there is a free Peacock. But, you know, I mentioned it when I signed up. I've been watching um, The Joy of Painting. <laughs> I'll just put Bob Ross on and zone out to that. They have a good channel that's SNL. It's just a mash of, you know, SNL skits through the beginning to current. Uh, there's there's good shit other, like otherwise on there that I, I pay attention to as well. I heard the CBS streaming service is actually pretty good. And it's got some cool shit. Like, I heard The Stand isn't terrible. The first episode of Twilight Zone, the new Twilight Zone, I thought was was cool. Oh, that's the, the Jordan can't. Peele one, right? Com- Jordan Correct. Peele and... could uh, I always fuck his, na- his name up. Uh, Kamal Nanjani. Yeah, close enough. Yeah. He was... I watched the one... The, the, the Twilight Zone with him. And... I heard I heard CBS uh, streaming isn't terrible, but I don't know. I'm not you. You you spend ten dollars a month for Peacock. Yeah. Oh, man, do do you That's know? Why we call you the Peacock? Oh shit! Nice low one. blow, Shuddy. <laughs> low blow. You nobody cucks me with P. <laughs> do you um? Have you like looked at your 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 cable or TV entertainment budget? Are you even saving money at this point? Oh yeah, big time. You are, yeah. Fuck yeah, cable is. You run like some legacy cable shit, right? Weren't you paying like ninety dollars a month or something? No, no, it wasn't that cool. Because I had to sign up for um when I moved here a couple of years ago. The they're like sp- the only option for everything: TV, phone, and internet is is Spectrum. So I yeah. had to sign up for a new service, and they you know they give you a sweetheart first year deal. But I've been here for a few years at this point, so I'm back to yeah. the dick in the ass here. Yeah, they don't give you the sweetheart decade deal, I'll tell you that. No, I'm, holy shit, they do not make canceling easy either. Man, these scumbags. Well, they know you're yeah, gone, and they're like, oh, hold on, let me just put you on hold for 45 minutes for no reason. Yeah, I had a similar experience with your former employer this morning. Yikes. They <laughs> also, <laughs> I, I had an experience with them the other day, actually. Oh no. no. They put me on hold during the texting communication. It's like, wait, what? How about you just delay your response, your text back, and don't put me on hold? <laughs> like, you know, like why don't you just like actually just like, you know, pause in between responses? But yeah, uh, we don't have to go down that road. The trial in my new car is up. So they were calling to trying to get me to subscribe. And he went for his whole spiel about all access. And I was like, no, you guys got rid of the only show I would even listen to. I haven't even turned it on since it's been not been on the air. I have no interest in. And then he went through the whole spiel about the normal subscription. I was like, dude, I am just going to stick with my Spotify and podcasts. Leave me alone. Yeah, they're resilient over there. Well, this is awkward. How about we play a game? Yeah, let's play a game. I prepared one. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, I'll make it awkward. I, you're very good at that, Jeff. <laughs> you want it to be weird letter around letter here? Bu- I'll make it weird. Letterbox D, Letterbox D, it's Letterbox D, the D stands for dicks. It's the Letterbox D game. <laughs> so once again, Shuddy Boy has taken the reins and put together a Letterbox D game. For me and Jeff I to did. face off on. Uh, Jeff, get ready to be thrashed. Wait, I'm confused. Didn't he say I am D Boner? Oh, did you? Oh, well, no, no. Kevin and I, I text Kevin that I could all, I didn't do it in the group chat. Um, oh, I you sidebarred I, it. 
Interesting. Yeah, because we wanted to take a couple shots at you too, Jeff, while we were discussing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, well, that's cool. I don't want to hear that uh, shit anyways. And I decided that I would do Letterbox D because uh, that was a little bit easier for me to put together and work get work done. Um, but uh, so that's what we're doing. Uh, <laughs> and this is going to be you may kick his ass, Kevin, and it wasn't intentional. Um, oh. <laughs> okay. All right. I promise it wasn't, but these this is a John Candy edition of Letterbox D. Everybody has been in films with John Candy. I watched a John Candy movie last night. So we're going to start off with John Candy himself. Ooh. So the Letterbox D game is based off the Letterboxd Oh, app, sorry. And you can look up a celebrity on it, and it will list their movies by popularity, but their algorithm goes based on how many Letterboxd users have made lists that that movie appears on. It's very weird. It took us a while to figure it out, and a listener actually hit us up and was like, hey, dummies, this is their algorithm. So it doesn't always make sense. It's not their most, their highest grossing, their most popular. It's just whatever got thrown on the most lists. Uh, Jeff, would you like to go first? I know like fucking four John Candy movies. Based on how he introed this segment, I'm going to go ahead and assume JFK isn't the winner. So I'm going to go ahead and put, I'll, go, I'll say Uncle Buck. That's That'll be my... It's my John Candy guess. Am I doing it right? All right. I will swoop in and win by saying Home Alone. Yes. Kevin gets three <laughs> points. Uh, no, I, that was one of the fucking few that I knew. I just thought again, like, dude. You think uh, Uncle I'm Buck trying, is more popular than Home Alone? Well, no. The, the, the best part about Jeff's guess is JFK is higher on the list than Uncle Buck. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, there's been too many times with the fuck. There's been like weird results. Or JFK was number six. Uncle Buck was number nine. Uh, <laughs> Home Alone was number one. The Blues Brothers was number two. Ooh. And Spaceballs was number three. Mm. Oh. Spaceballs. I watched a very strange John Candy movie last night called uh, Summer Rental, which I put on my watch list oh, after Carl movie. Reiner died. Uh, maybe it was one of those movies you had to see when it came out. Cause definitely not the strongest offering. I'm glad I watched it. Cause I like, I had never seen it before and I like watching John Candy just do stuff. But, um, I, I even by 1985 standards, it's gotta be very tame as far as the gags go. Yeah. So moving okay. on to the next one. Oh, did Rick I fucking spoil things by throwing that out there? No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. Not at all. Summer rental is not going to pop up anywhere in the, in right, the coming in the coming options. Uh, summer rental is actually uh, where the I thought I saw it on his list. Just Bob, I'm disappointed. I'm being too sharp for my own good. I should have just no, said you're home not. alone. That's not what the problem Fucking is. Fucking obvious. Here. Yes, I'm overthinking it because I'm too <laughs> intelligent. That's what's happening. <laughs> I'm losing this game because I'm too much of a genius. Yeah, I'm over. Th I'm thinking about everything, and I need to just be thinking about dumb things like you. Yeah, get into my mindset. Let's get stupid, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I got to dumb down to beat your ass in letterbox D. Yeah. Wait, what's it? What are you waiting for? A guess? No, no. It, the Rick Moranis is the next. Oh, okay, okay. He was in that bully movie with Tom Arnold and uh, Booger, Curtis Armstrong. Remember I called? <laughs> you remember I called Booger out on that? Yeah. Say, like, dude, I love that shit. He's like, what? I wasn't in that movie, and then I fucking found him in that movie. He were, you son of a bitch. Yeah, Probably before not bully. Before the Letterbox D game was even a thing, you beat Curtis Armstrong at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at the at the Curtis Armstrong Letterbox D game. Yeah. I'll go. I'll go spaceballs, even though that was already said. Even though, I mean, it was for John Candy, but I'll go spaceballs. All right, Shuddy Boy, should I 
Oh, should I go know. for the jugular? No, no, no. Let me take that back. Can uh, I take that back? Kevin, please? what do you think? Please. He didn't say final answer, did he? No. All right. Go ahead. It's a homer pick. I'm going Little Giants. Going Little Giants. Final answer? That's my final answer. Okay. Shuddy Boy, should I go for the jugular again and yes, win? Yes, go for the jugular. Ghostbusters. No, 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 don't do that. I, my guess is Ghostbusters. That is number one. Jeff <laughs> took himself out of points and would have had two <laughs> with space balls. Instead, he chose Little Giants, which comes in at number 15. <laughs> Dude, it's got Ed O'Neill. Ed O'Neill is such an alpha in that movie. <laughs> Spike and I- Icebox. Dude, uh, that's that's a better movie than Ghostbusters. All right, Jeff. Don't, don't at me. All right, Jeff. You son of a bitch. Here's your chance at redemption. Here's your chance at redemption. I am. I need a seven pointer. I need a whole touchdown. Bill Pullman. Oh, you know what? Rick Moranis. Number two was Spaceballs. Number three was Brother Bear. Brother Bear. I don't even know that. Animated. Bill Pullman. When an impulsive boy named Kanai is magically transformed into a bear, he must literally walk in another's footsteps until he learns some valuable life lessons. Oh, boy. Whose turn is it to go first? also stars Joaquin Phoenix. Jeff, you go first. Vegan. You go... <laughs> and Michael Clark Duncan. You go first every time, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I need it. Can I get three chances? And if they add up to be yours, then I win. <laughs> uh, um, hmm. Bill Pullman. I don't... I can only think of two movies. One I just said, and then Independence Day. It's got that's you know, I'll go in Independence Day, and if I lose, there could be League of Their Own, but I'm gonna go Independence Day. Okay, Kevin. <laughs> I hope I'm getting the right David Lynch movie, but I'm gonna go with Lost Highway. I always get Lost Highway and um, Mulholland Drive confused. Okay. But another thing you have to take into account here is Letterbox D is also pretentious. So coming in at number 10 is a league of their own. So good thing you did not get that, Jeff. It was a close one. Uh, number three is Spaceballs. Shit. <laughs> Could have went back to the wall with that one. Is Lost Highway. Oh, yes. Okay. And I got to num- win. And number one is Independence Day. Okay, so Jeff right. is on the board. So and this now... this this game does have it. It does make thank you. That if it, if it wasn't Independence Day, I would have been now been all fucked up. We are getting into some more difficult ones. Oh. Andy McDowell, Mel Brooks. Uh, oh. This is tough. I'll go with my. I go with. Uh, damn it, Kevin! You go first. You go first. Really? I mean, no. I'll go Blazing Saddles. I'll go Blazing Saddles. That's what I'm going with. Of course, you go with the racist one. <laughs> of course, on brand. <laughs> Fuck. That redhead had some sick jugs and blazing saddles. <laughs> they don't talk about that enough. Plus just boobies. I don't know whether I should go with space balls or mm. I'm gonna err on the side of pretentiousness. Although it's it's kind of insulting to say that about this movie, but I think it might, I think number two might be Young Frankenstein. I was going to say, can we get two guesses and then we add up the points the since I'm behind by a lot? Sure. No, no, it's too confusing. I, Cause I was going to go Young Frankenstein as well. That's, I think High Anxiety is an underrated movie, but I don't think it'll be, I don't think it'll be very popular. Yeah, I'm, I'm locking in Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles has to be number one. So, number five is Blazing Saddles. Oh, no! 
This is what I'm talking about. What do we, what do we know what we're doing here? What, what, are, what are we doing here? Number four <laughs> is Spaceballs. Oh, okay. shit. Number three is The Prince of Egypt. Okay. Come on. Number two is Young Frankenstein. Nice. And number one is Toy Story 4. Oh, oh that is bullshit. I would, I would, I would object to that being considered being the right answer. You can't go there. Honorable mentions. Robin Hood Men in Tights is number nine. Oh, solid flick. It's been what a while since I watched that. Talking Two is number 17. Carrie Ewell's classic, Robin Hood Men in Tights. <laughs> okay. Carrie Ewell's. Uh, John Candy worked with Kevin Costner in JFK, so now we're going Kevin Costner. Six degrees of candy. I love it. Costner. Wow. There's actually seven degrees of candy, but okay. Costner. Wow. <sighs> they better not fuck me here. I'll go feel the dreams, even though I prefer like a bunch of other Costner movies. I love uh, Field of Dreams, by the way. That is I know you do. A five dicker for me. Yeah, you mentioned it. Baseball movie. I don't hate it. I'm just saying. I saw in the theaters. As a kid, shockingly enough, it's a good one. Kevin, Shubles Joe Jackson got fucked. Kevin Costner, man, I am. Um, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I'm gonna go with Waterworld. I don't know why. So, because Jeff is losing so badly. We're gonna go play. We're gonna modify it to Jeff's rule, and since he got higher, he will get a point. Nice, yeah. Uh, let's, Water let's put World, some Jeff Clark training wheels on this one. Waterworld was number nine. Field of Dreams number eight. It's, JFK number seven. Dances with Wolves oh, number six. I know what it is now. The Untouchables was number five. It's going to be Justice League. Three was Hidden Figures. Two is Man of Steel. One is Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Oh, fuck. Uh, For some reason, I thought there might have been a flashback scene in Justice League. Yep, I completely forgot he was was Pa Kent. Okay. They have been in multiple movies together. John Candy and Steve Martin. I don't know like wow. anything Steve Martin's been in besides Father of the Bride. <laughs> That's my guess. That's my guess, Father of the Bride. I don't know. I'm trying. I we might like have to change the rules to just give Jeff a point if he guesses a movie that has the right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, or it's just be like good boy Jeff that's a movie nobody we're talking about right. is in it but you've lit, you've named a movie you get a point I'll go with I'll go with that as my final guess but he was in planes trains and automobiles right three amigos those are those are the probably the most famous ones all right so well, Jeff first, why don't we maybe go with one of those two instead of father of the bride this is getting ridiculous <laughs> no 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 yeah no you're Kevin Kevin's feeling is right. This is getting ridiculous. I locked in Father of the Bride. Where do, where does it rank? Actually, well, Kevin, you got to give your guess first. I know Shuddy Boy just threw some clues out there of movies that will get points. Yeah, well, Shuddy was always cheating for you. What, what do we got here? He's for, cheating I for you. I was trying to help you. Mm-hmm. Kevin I, is currently winning 10 to 4. <laughs> I, just need to, four. I just need a touchdown. I just need a touchdown. That's it. I'm gonna make the extra point. I'm ahead. I'm gonna go with the jerk. I feel like okay. the jerk's got to be a point getter. Well, it is a point getter, but only because we added the rule where for being the highest you get a point. Oh shit! I get a booby. Prize. I thought that was a rule for just me. Oh, it's just fine. That's just for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! So yeah. you're not gonna get that point because Father of the Bride was number eleven. The jerk was number seven. Oh shit! 
Number three, Little Shop of Horrors. Ooh. Uh, number flip. two, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Ooh. And number one, The Prince of Egypt. Okay. That was a Mel Brooks movie? I've never even fucking seen that movie. I've seen... I've never I seen it I either. I most... I've never, it's an what animated is that? film. It's animated? Oh. Yeah. I figured it was like ripping on like it's Lawrence the of Arabia. It's Moses and Ramses. Is it a Jesus movie? It's... Mel not- Brooks is on the tribe. Is that a it's Kirk a- Cameron produced film? <clears throat> uh... It's a non-secular telling of the Moses tale. Ah, oh, man. Why do so many people like that? With Val Kilmer, Ralph Fiennes, Michelle Pfeiffer, Sandy Bullock. Ralph Jeff Fiennes? Goldblum, Val Kilmer. Danny Glover, Patrick Stewart, Helen Mirren, Steve Martin, Martin Short. Holy shit. And Mel Brooks. Huh. So does that mean, mean the game's over? People, but those are all the big names. What? I have one more. All right, let's Um, do it. And if Jeff... I want to duke all over Jeff's face on this one. I I think if Jeff... Put it on me. (laughs) Richard Pryor. I I almost said Blazing Saddles. He wrote that. He wasn't in there. That's the other black guy. Just kidding. Uh... It's the one that he did with Gene Wilder. Hear no evil, see no evil. He's done a few with Gene Wilder. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah. But yes, that it's see no evil, hear no evil is the name of that film. I'll go the toy. Mm, that's what I was going to take. I love that movie. That's pretty much what you want to do. You want you want <laughs> Richard Pryor's job in no. the toy. I don't want to be racially abused by some rich, like five year old. Just take out the racial abuse, and you're an entertainment guru for a five, uh, whatever, a ten year old. No, for a rich ten year old. That is not what that discussion was about. I want to help, like Jay Z, have a cooler house. I'd be like, I know you've probably thought of some cool shit, Jay Z, but here's some stuff you might have missed. You should buy this and this and this. I Not you're let Blue Ivy abuse me. <laughs> um, oh, fuck. I was gonna. I was gonna take the toy. So I'll go. Um, I'll take. Um, hear no evil. See no evil. See no evil. Hear no evil. Ah shit. Yeah, that one. Uh, Idiot. He was wrong. That doesn't count. Oh, if you. He said it the same way you said it when I corrected you. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't my final guess. Uh, he also didn't. It, anyway, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant to the standings of the game. The toy was number 15. (laughs) See no evil, hear no evil was number five. Whoa. That is very strange. Number three, Superman three. (laughs) Number two, the Muppet movie. Oh, those damn Muppet movies are tricky. And as bummed as you were about the Superman 3 miss, Kevin, uh, number one was a movie you've already said, Lost Highway. (laughs) What? (laughs) I didn't see that. What is that? What movie is that? Who is that? Is that David Lynch? Is Like, while they're on the Lost Highway, does, does... Richard Pryor run by the car while he's on fire. Like I, I've never seen lost highway, so I can't, but it's his number one. Wow. Let's see that. That's shocking. You feel shocked. Uh, Yeah. I'm very surprised. One of his comedies wasn't number one. They also put comedy specials up there too. So I thought it might be one of his, his comedy specials. Richard Pryor is uh, billed as somebody named Arnie. And on IMDb, he's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, what are we doing here? Twenty-two, twenty-three. He's like 20, 
35 from the top build. Oh, my uh, God. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, Henry Rollins is billed higher than Richard Pryor. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what is this a David Lynch movie? Yes. Gary Busey billed higher than Richard Pryor. Man. I honestly couldn't tell you a fucking this 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 is what everyone's talking about nowadays in Hollywood. You know, this is this is that old school racism. That's why that's why Richard Pryor was billed up below fucking Gary Busey. Wow. I know what you're talking about. That was a very surprising end to the game, Shuddy. Twists and turns and surprises abound. I like it. Yeah. I guess we we all got lost in the highway. (laughs) Pop, 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 pop. Good job, Shuddy. I had fun. Thank you. You Even though I consistently get my dick kicked in in this game. (sighs) Ah. Well, Shuddy, um, we got a couple of minutes. Why don't we uh, go to one of the things that you hit me with in one of your text messages when we were goofing on Jeff? Wait, one of the sidebars? <laughs> sure, which one? Uh, why don't we goof on you for being old? You mentioned to me that you're slowly turning into your parents. I don't I, know if I that feel, sweater uh, is is one of the things. Yeah, that's exactly what. Oh, uh, really? Now, that is exactly. Um, I went. I I did a new segment for Patreon called Shuddy Goes to the Record Store, and I went to the record store yesterday wearing a fucking cardigan sweater. Well, you probably records. I mean, you probably just look like everybody else in there. I feel like record yeah. listeners. Our our big sweater guys and ladies, but that but yeah, I'm looking at when we go out clothes shopping. I'm looking at sweaters. I even I am currently wearing a pair. Well, you oh, can't see because of my show, belt. He's showing his ass off. Uh, I have now graduated into wearing Gap jeans. I mean, like, I'm just going straight up old person, and I wear Gap jeans because uh, they're fucking cheap. And they look decent. Well, these were actually cheap uh, because the gap in the local mall is closing. So oh. instead of fifty dollars, they were seventeen. Yeah, I didn't even think the gap existed anymore. I thought, uh, it was, I thought but no, died. I am. Yeah, sweaters. I'm getting more accustomed to. Uh, I am so excited. You guys asked to record early, so <laughs> then we could Sharon and I could move our IKEA trip up from tomorrow night to this evening Um, be careful buddy i feel like ikea trips cause breakups and divorces we nope um nope i'm putting my foot down we're getting the sloshing google's chair no no that's it every couple uh, at the end of every couple's um relationship begins with a trip to ikea we go to IKEA relatively regularly. I love IKEA. Oh, okay. You get the meatballs. Time. I got you. Are you a I meatball eater? Uh, we have bought their their meatballs frozen because of COVID. They're not open, uh, so we get their meatballs and their sauce, and we bring it home and prepare it. Swedish meatballs are a fucking joke. Sure. They sh- those assholes shouldn't even attempt it. They're Leave it deli- to the Italians. I love Swedish meatballs. You guys work on your here on your herd immunity. You let us Italians work on the meatballs. Oh, you're claiming uh, 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 Italy, Jeff? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mama yeah, mia. Like I'm 25 percent Italian. My mom brought her amazing, what should be award winning pasta sauce to our house, and she told Cheech the recipe. Cheech has got a memory like a fucking sealed trap. Oh, and Mama, what are you doing? I am making the meatballs. Yeah, we're going to have some legit pasta sauce working around here soon. And maybe you can come by and try it when the pandemic is over. If you quit, if you keep acting like a dick, I'm going to pull your your <laughs> invitation. I don't know what kind of sidebar conversations you pussies are having, but no, I'll was, discuss that. I was joking about the, the sidebars being about you, Jeff. Yeah, know, they I were. Know. I, was going I, know. With it. I know. Um, I know. All right, before we take off, Let's play one. Voicemails, yay! Um, I got hit up 
by a well-known voicemail giver. And I would like to give their thoughts on something while it's still relatively timely. Play. Mad scientist party hour. Merry fucking Christmas, you filthy animals. It is 9.30 on Christmas night. And I am just happy finishing up this fucking steamy fucking dog shit pile of trash that is Wonder Woman. Wow. Uh-oh. Fucking wow. No wonder they cast Pedro Pascal as fucking uh, the Mandalorian. He's a fucking trash actor without that helmet on. Whoa. He's been good in other stuff. Are you talking hot? I like them. Are Game we talking about the switch hitter in Game of Thrones? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Viper. Spoiler alert, Sharon. Was it the Red Viper? That was his name in that. Yeah, yes. the Red, the Red, the Red Viper likes to go. He parties on uh, both coasts. Yeah, I mean, he's fucking cringy, dude. I didn't know, like. He was good in Narcos. But this is terrible. His little fucking Asian kid who's overact. I don't, it's fucking weird. Dude. I know it's weird to pick on a little kid, but I mean, they didn't give that kid much to work with. But it was weird. Like he just has like an Asian kid that like they never addressed why. <laughs> like I thought, I thought they that don't they want would... you to see his color. Like the Mandalorian just adopted Asian. Well, I thought maybe he had like. Um an Asian mom that was out of the picture because she was off doing some other like story guided thing, or maybe she herself was a, a super villain or some shit, but it's just like, Nope, he, he made uh, an Asian baby for some reason. Yep. And he, the kid shows up randomly on weekends. <laughs> maybe he gets like He just appears. Yeah. <laughs> like the mom just dro- drops him off at the, the office building and kicks him out of the car. Yeah. <laughs> the kid's just there. Yeah, if you it's think, my weekend again already. Like that, if you think I about hate your father, I don't want to see him. If you think about anything that happens in that movie for more than two seconds, you're like, "Huh? Wait a second. That's exactly what happens every time. He's like, "It's my weekend with him again." And By the, the kid way, is just there. Speaking of kids in Wonder Woman, there's a scene where they show Wonder Woman losing her powers, and she's in like Egypt or the Middle East or something, and she's swinging on her lasso like Spider-Man. I don't know what it's attached to that's allowing her to swing through the air in the middle of a desert, but she's doing it. And she swooped up these two kids that were about to get hit by cars, and she's holding on to them, and she loses her grip and falls. She lands on the children to break her fall. Like, full-on, massive, massive fall, lands on two children, slow-mo bounces and rolls, (laughs) and then the kids are just like, whew, Thanks for saving us, Wonder Woman. Like, she crushes these motherfuckers. They would have been dead. And they they just get up and they're like, oh, thank you. That would have really sucked to gotten hit by that car. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, <laughs> real quick, while we're talking about kids in Wonder Woman, Pat, Warner Brothers hated the opening scene. And yeah. Patty Jenkins get fought why. for them to keep it in. I don't know why. I do not know why. All right, here's the rest of um, Arts' Christmas review. Fucking weird. The whole concept of the movie is fucking stupid. The CGI is fucking garbage. It's just dumb. There's not a point. The the only thing I enjoyed in this movie was fucking, there was at one point Wonder Woman, the guy points a gun at Wonder Woman. She catches it. She racks the slide. A bullet comes out and she fucking tinks it at somebody else. I thought that was pretty fucking cool. Other than that, well, I mean, and her fucking tits. Her tits are fucking on point. There he is. There's HR Arts. This is not good. This is not even a full dick. Like, 0.75 dicks? Like, you know, like, fucking... This is stupid. (laughs) The whole premise of this stupid movie came down to everybody in the entire world doing the right thing. Eat my ass, you fucking hippie piece of shit, asshole, director, writer, fuck faces. <laughs> like, this is retarded. Arch is I pissed. Like, fucking it's retarded. It's stupid, dumb, and gay is what it is. It's fucking well, it's retarded, stupid, stupid dumb, and gay. He should I be. Feel no, he shouldn't like repeat I when he says things hour, like that. Two and a half hours of my His life. Quotes. I feel like His I'll words. never get it back. I'm genuinely bummed that I sat through this whole thing. 
wow, what a steamy pile of dog shit. But as always, smoke weed, I'm out. I like the little Leo chime in we got there at the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Leo just confirmed everything Art said. Yeah, that was basically Leo, like, translating Leo speak. Yeah, he was like, here, here. Well, well yeah, I uh, can't argue with Art. <laughs> yeah, nor, nor would we want to. <laughs> <laughs> was there, I mean, there's not much that happens in that movie that's defensible, so. <sighs> that's a bummer. No nudity, right? Just no. Got to. I'm gonna I'm gonna circle back every time we're talking about a Gal Gadot Gadot movie, whatever the hell fuck Gal. You said it right the first time, Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. Anytime, anytime we're talking about one of her movies, I'm always just gonna fall back on did did her did she pull her boobies out? No, but Pedro Pascal does whip his dick out and windmill his soft penis <laughs> in the air. That's how he flies. <laughs> oh man. I, I I was I was confused. I thought he had the Asian adopted child in Mandalorian <laughs> for a second. <laughs> you guys Wait, were talking. Is I was it, like, Wait. isn't Baby Yoda Asian? That's weird. He so he's a bounty hunter and he's a adopted father. He's a very progressive Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, clearly. All right, everybody. Well, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, bearing with me through the, the beginning of the podcast while I got some shit off my chest. A little bit of audio therapy for me. I didn't realize that was very selfish, but, uh, you know, it doesn't happen often. We're usually poopy, pee pee, farty guys, and we will continue to be. Are you uh, pat yourself on the back? You made it through the poopiest year of all. Uh, Jeff and Shuddy, any closing thoughts? No, sir. Happy New Year, Puminati. Yeah, Happy New Year. I thought you wrapped it up nicely, Kevin. Thank you, Jeff. Um, If you need more MSPH in your life, please head over to our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Mad Scientist Party Hour. We put out an episode of Supermarket Queefs uh, this this weekend on the $10 tier that people have been hitting me up nonstop about. It seemed to be a, a big hit. So check that out if you need more of us in your life. We also, uh, all the shows are on YouTube now, so go to youtube.com slash madscientistpartyhour and subscribe if you haven't done so. That's a big help. It also helps when you subscribe to us on iTunes and give us a five-star review and all that fun shit. The Jason L. Show is back, available as a podcast. Get it now. Episode three is coming out this week. Uh, And you can also follow us on Instagram. I'm at Kevin Craft. At Shuddy Boy. At Jeff R. Records. And at MSPH Podcast. Jeff also has his podcast, Fade the Media. If you need more Jeff and more sports, that's there for you. Uh, if you want to shoot us your emails, it's madscientistpartyhour at gmail.com. Or you can call in to voicemails, yay, with 201-472-0139. Uh, RIP Alexi Laiho. And until next time, ooh, something!